Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. Mr. President, today is yet another important day and here Right here at Community House, Mr. President, we are honored and um, blessed to be visited by one of our fathers in, in the country, His Royal Highness Paramount Chief Chitimukul from Northern Province, Mr. President. And um, in your quest to meet various stakeholders in the country, you've had this engagement of meeting various royal highnesses right here at Community House. But today is a special day that the Munyeru member is here. <coughs> and um, in terms of our engagement, Mr. President, we will get the, the remarks from His Royal Highness. I'm sure he's come with them. Um, his um, assistant, or if need be, himself. After that, we uh, request you, Mr. President, to also give your remarks in view of what the Royal Highness will have indicated, given to you. Thereafter, Mr. President, um, the media have a very tight schedule. We'll be able to move somewhere there to have um, a royal family photo session, then we'll allow the media to, to leave, after which we should be able to have another engagement, Mr. President. So on behalf of the President, Your Royal Highness, you're welcome. My name is David Ngoma, Special Assistant to the President, Politico. I will also allow the other colleagues that I'm with to introduce themselves. Your Royal Highness, my name is Munji Harenji. I'm the private secretary to the president. I'm George Mbambo, ex-quoting the Prime Chief. I'm Sidney Chilesha, accompanying the chief. Thank you so very much. On this trip. Right. So, over to you. Yeah, thank you, Mr. President, for giving me this privilege of meeting you today. Though we have met outside, mm -hmm. but today I'm in your home. <laughs> so it's a very gratifying. Well, one of the things, the challenges as the traditional rulers we get, it has been from long time ago, during the colonial days, colonization. Because normally the chief was got two roles. It's with the administration and it's the tribal leader. So the distinction is quite difficult for people to, to make a distinction. During the colonial days, they said we are aligned with the, the colonialists. And uh, we are re receiving ridicules from the, the nationalists. Then when you came after independence, the same thing as tried to happen that uh, normally, the, 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 as I said, the role is to work with the government, that's our role, because we represent the government on the behalf of the people. There was a recruitment of soldiers and so forth, that was being done by the chiefs. So during this uh, dispensation now of after colonialism, we also get some problems. 
working with the government of the day, that we should be the, our policy. We work with the government of the day, but it usually is misinterpreted. But that's the role of a traditional rulers. Anyway, we appreciate your efforts looking at the state of the economy when you took over. The economy has, hasn't been very, very good since 1991, as I would say. Because according to an international organization, present Gaunda left poverty level at 56%. Then after 10 years, MOMD came to about 82. After that 10 years. So since then, the, the economy has not been very, very good. And you have entered at a period where it's so critical. So we are just praying for you so that the God gives you guidance how we can go through these challenges and problems we have. But anyway, the first step with the government took was uh, taking the battle of uh, teachers, that recruitment of about 6,000 teachers, and then the, those healthy workers. That is a very, that was a very, very broad and uh, it was very, very good because that was a very bold action to take, taking into account the state of the economy. And then you took, the, the, you looked at the lives of those teachers and so forth. So we would like you to take another step of trying to, I don't know, you can try to raise some money with those teachers who are there. They could be teaching where they are, but they are getting some some sort of an allowance of about 2,000 just to keep them up there so that they don't just stay back home, at least they are doing something. That, of course, the government <coughs> would consider mm -hmm. of taking them up where they are, they are teaching, but they are just giving a certain allowance just to keep them off from Miss, mischievous and so forth. They have got something to do instead of just staying at home. Is that the people teachers you're talking about? Teachers, yes. Okay. Teachers, teachers, those who are one or three recruited for, mm -hmm. for in this exercise. Mm -hmm. And in general, we very much appreciate, I very much personally appreciate the way you are taking the steps in the economy and the, the bold steps you are taking which I think uh, after some time we shall see the results. Because usually the results don't appear just at right there. Mm -hmm. We have got to wait for the results mm -hmm. and wait. But we are I really appreciate the way you are carrying out the, the mm -hmm. especially on the economic front. Mm -hmm. And especially on the we have got some challenges on the roads and so forth. But since uh, you are doing something, we are seeing what you are doing, that's the thing. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Mr. President, for mm -hmm. allowing me to be with you this time. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. President, you may wish to <coughs> give your remarks. <coughs> Thank you very much. Uh, first and foremost, um, um, Your Royal Highness, Kanawe Samwine Rwemba, it's my duty to welcome you here as the first message I wish to deliver. We are truly, truly indebted to receive you in this community house. So we call it. We know you have a lot of responsibilities. But you found time to come here. We are grateful for that. And also to my brother, Mr. Chilesha here, mm -hmm. and to Bishop Mambo for facilitating together with my team the Paramount Chief's visitation. I step aside a little bit to thank you remember for finding time to attend our daughter's wedding a few days ago. Really, really grateful for that. The young couple are extremely skeptical about 
your presence, the presence of other traditional leaders at the wedding. And I hope you enjoyed yourself. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I made all the friends. Indeed. And also thank you for your message, um, messages that you deliver today. Um, but just to carry, pick it up from there, to confirm to you that um, we've come from a background of elections in accordance to our democratic constitutional provisions. And we want to confirm with you that our intent after getting public office accorded to us by the people of Zambia, the voters, our intent is very clear. One side as a prerequisite to the second side, but this one side is to reunite this country. We are completely determined to bring the country together. Doesn't matter the challenges we went through before elections, we are now here. And it's our duty to work to bring all the ten provinces of Zambia together in many facets, in many ways, including a decision we made when we were still in opposition to ensure that at the cabinet table, Mwene Luemba, we would have cabinet members from all the provinces of Zambia, irrespective of how the people voted. We didn't get MPs in certain regions, but luckily the constitution provides an instrument called presidential nominations, which we applied and made sure that all the provinces are represented in the cabinet of the new dawn European government. It's one that among many measures that we are putting in place to bring our country together. Because this a state called Zambia belongs to all of us. It does not matter where we are born, where we live. We are one. There will always be issues, but <laughs> our agenda is clear. Secondly, on the platform of unity, we are determined on the other side to drive development. We are in touch for our own ways, irrespective of where they live. Because we manage public affairs on their behalf. We are their servants. And therefore, we have an obligation to deliver development. But equitable development across the country. Challenge as Zambia jobs. Because that's the way it should be. And we do believe that others see things the way we see them, that this state called Zambia belongs to everybody. I don't wish to waste your time, but simply to say we are going to walk this talk. That's why we enhance the Constituents Development Fund mm -hmm. from 1.6 million per constituent per year to now 28 point three million per constituents per year. And when we disperse this money can have it, it's disbursed on the same day. On the same day to all the constituencies without segregation. And we know where we are coming from. We don't want to waste time on that. But this is our approach. But also we know that families are challenged. Some have no resources to send their children to school. Hence the free education to children who go to public schools. The list goes on. You touched on the employment of teachers, employment of health workers. Actually, employment now we are looking forward is more in the this year as we manage our resources properly. Police, correctional services, army, ZAV, everywhere. We take the same approach to what we did when we were employing teachers. Because one young person from Kawamba recorded herself 
once she got employment as a teacher she had graduated five years earlier she never got a job and so when she got it says i got a job i applied first i didn't believe it's possible that i'll get a job without having a relative in government having a, a friend in status and she went on to say this is wonderful and said better still I got a job without paying for something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Ka> something. <laughs> that underscores the importance of your role and so as fighting corruption. We must fight corruption, provide equitable you know, opportunities for all our children, all our people. But I must also say to you, we acknowledge the role of the traditional leaders. Our job is to work with them. Yes. Not against them, no, to work with them in the development process. Epela. Mm. Epela. Okay. And that's why we are keen and as a party, as a government, in a party in government to make sure that our government does not interfere in the selection process of who becomes winner November. Mm. That's a decision of Bashir Lubemba. Tell him why. That one, our president, I would like to make it clear. Thank you. On that one, uh, because many people didn't know that uh, the that problem we had with the president sat. Mm -hmm. Many people didn't know you were supporting me very much financially. <laughs> so, uh, you know, there was this couple where I even GBM had to leave the government as mm -hmm. Minister of Defense. Mm -hmm. There was a time when Mama went there. Uh, Mm -hmm. um, he went. He went to come to see me. Yes. He was blocked mm -hmm. on the way. Mm -hmm. Then he harassed mm -hmm. just because he wanted to come to mm -hmm. to see me and uh, because of that selection Indeed. of, of chiefs. <laughs> well, I really appreciate and remember your role you played you. during that time. Like anybody else, like uh, he then resigned and uh, the help you gave me materially and so forth. Thank, Thank you. you very much. It, it, it's our duty, Muni Lwemba, Kanaresa. That's what children do, um, decent children. But on a continuing basis, we will not interfere with the selection process. That's the job of the family members. Um, they must follow the family tree. But we also encourage families not to fight in the selection of traditional leaders not to take each other to court because I want to be able to do more. They should be able to sit down and resolve those so that we don't encourage in future those governments that have the appetite to interfere. We don't have the appetite by a deliberate decision. But in furtherance of our respect to work with our partners, traditional leaders, as we do with the churches, we have taken a decision, Kanaga, so that this year alone we'll build 100 palaces okay. for chiefs okay. in our quest to bring decency back and respectability to our traditional institutions. A Royal Highness's house, two Capasso's houses, offices, yes. absolutely meeting hall because it's essential. Meeting Hall is essential. And we also want to ensure that the Royal Highness are supported with decent transport, without segregation. And we would also ensure that there's water. I know your palace is a decent palace, but your colleagues don't have palaces. Many of them. We want to bring decency to them as well, as a nation. It's not a favor to them, it's a duty, it's an obligation of people like us who are put in government and of course lighting and other things that I want I want to waste time yes. Yeah. I know this yeah. this yeah. slave of yours likes to I say think, more things. Yes, I, I <laughs> <think Montanbay. laughs> <laughs> absolutely <laughs> for the capacity. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Ab absolutely. Yeah. And um Karabesa, we also want to ensure that the government detaches itself from the politicking around chief's allowances. That should be mandated. As resources allow, that facility must be availed to the traditional leaders without favoring 
or selecting that this, this, this group of chiefs are friends of the president or friends of the party, no? It's a duty. It's an I think all these small bits and pieces are to change the way the government and the people relate with their traditional leaders. I don't want to waste your time, but to say to you, free education is one of the things that we value a lot. Because families, some families have children that cannot afford to go to school. And we've seen the effect of the free education. Classrooms are now full. We are busy building more classrooms through the CDF. Desks, I'm sure you've heard. I hope desks are being made in Kasama. Yeah, I think so. We are not importing cannabis and desks because we have the wood, we have the skills from our young people. If they don't have the skills, the CDF is providing skills training in there so that capacity which is here is utilized and we don't spend for an accent. I can afford to say that to you because you are a well-read traditional leader. We retain the resources here, we value art, we create the jobs, and we supply the desk to our children. No child should sit on the floor. So the list is long. <laughs> so otherwise, thank you very much. Mr. President, yes. even the issue of minimum allowance is part of the, you know, yes. the Oden, just about 2018, mm. somewhere there, mm. children at universities mm. were denied to have minimum allowance. Okay. It was abolished. Oh, okay, it was yes. abolished. Yes. Mm. That was mm. made mm. Uh, children from mm. poor mm. backgrounds mm. to attain a decent education. Mm. No but this government, Mr. President, mm. has reintroduced it. Mm -hmm. And not only in two universities, now it is at eight universities. Eight universities? Yes, yes. yes. public yes. universities. Yes, yes. 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 it is at UNSA, it's at CBU, mm -hmm. it is at uh, Kapasa Makasa, mm -hmm. it is at um, mm -hmm. Kuba University, mm -hmm. it is at Chalimbana University, mm -hmm. it is at Falawana University, mm -hmm. it is at Inkwami mm -hmm. University, it is at University, and the list goes on about eight. Mm -hmm. okay. So that's what government mm -hmm. is doing. Mm -hmm. Right, Mr. Absolutely. So, Your Royalness, thank you once more for visiting us. And um, I think uh, we will continue this interaction. Um, we've also taken a decision that will have structured meetings with the chiefs in the provinces. Yes. When we travel to those provinces, we'll, amongst the things we'll be doing is to organize meetings to meet other chiefs. Because yes. here we are, we are meeting but not many can have this opportunity to meet. So when we're in the province, we'll meet the rest of your um, traditional leaders in the northern, in Bapula, in northwestern, eastern, as it were. I think the last trip we had was Copperboard, and we met your colleagues there, okay. literally all of them. Okay. So we want to suggest that when we're coming to northern next time, maybe we'll work through you, my team will work through you, your structures, yes. to allow us to meet the traditional leaders um, when we are in the northern, as it is in other provinces. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Alright, that's all right for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you, peace. I gotta go.